Hey there, Touch Designer Developers, Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to work on creating a piece of generative art that is inspired by glitch art and album covers of the late 90s and early 2000s, along with net art of the same time. So although the results of our network will generate this very interesting and complex series of patterns, it actually only takes just a couple of operators to set up. There's a lot of room to explore with this one, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun putting it together. So as some of you are probably already familiar with, uh, the glitch was used in an artistic way long before the late 90s, early 2000s, and has since kind of become part of the contemporary uh, designer's toolkit in some cases, and a part of uh, subsequent movements in design and music and, and other areas um, since that time. But there was this moment around the early 2000s where um, this early net art, the ability to generate and corrupt files on the computer um, as they gained more uh, processing power, and as well um, a kind of new scene within the experimental electronic music field that uh, specifically used the glitch, uh, creating glitch music uh, was also super popular. So all of these things kind of cross-pollinated and there was definitely this uh, kind of like new media uh, glitch zeitgeist going on. And uh, a lot of this can be kind of difficult to track down these days, at least like original examples of this stuff. Um, so I just thought I would uh, show you some of the inspirations that I have been looking at for this particular effect, and uh, then we can get into making it. So the first is an artist called Remy, uh, which is stylized lowercase r, lowercase e, capital M-I, and they did uh, a number of glitchy artworks in the early 2000s, which you can see here on their website. And these are just static images, which really are this small. Um, if you open them up as this is a, you know, these are uh, rather old images now and an old website, but um, these, I'm not sure what they were generated with, but really capture that uh, kind of abstract aesthetic that we're going for don't really seem to start off with any kind of um, uh, image or video content. It looks like it's purely uh, generative kind of stuff. And then if we click on this link here, there's a number of even smaller GIFs that show how these were animated. So this is not exactly the style that we're uh, capturing, but again, kind of gives you an idea of the aesthetic that people were generating. Another more well-known person is Daniel Temkin, and this project is a little bit later than the time frame I was just talking about, but Daniel uh, created these tools for working with the Commodore 64 and VIC-20 that let you uh, kind of hack the um, character generation system there to create artworks. And I felt like these kind of fell into that visual aesthetic category as well, as well as being very interesting and cool to look at. Um, and here's one closer up that really kind of captures that look. So a lot of this stuff has very uh, minimal colors and um, kind of geometric uh, compositions to it. Then we have Rosa Menkman. Uh, this one obviously really capturing the glitchy vibe um, very well and looks much more like something like a glitched out VHS tape than some of the stuff we've seen before. A uh, really cool piece there. And then I thought I'd also point out how this sort of translated into the world of music uh, with people like Autecker, who um, the Designers Republic created a number of album covers for that are not specifically uh, glitched images or even really um, trying to capture that kind of glitched aesthetic, but they have this sort of net art, uh, new millennium kind of look to them that is sort of similar to what we're going for. And again, here we have that muted color palette, geometric shapes, and so on. So these are just a couple of their uh, album covers from that time. Finally, uh, if you're interested in digging into this a little bit more and seeing some works from that time that are uh, kind of collected together, as I said, they're kind of uh, hard to find. This book, Glitch Designing Imperfection, has a great collection of images that um, showcase this type of work in more detail. Uh, 
Um, unfortunately, it's become a little bit pricey. Uh, I don't know if it's out of print or something like that, but if you can track down a copy, this has some really cool examples. So without further ado, let's jump into building our effect. We're gonna start off with a blank network and then we will head to the chop page and add a constant. In this case, I'm going to use a constant to define the resolution of a number of operators just to make it easier for us to adjust if we want to at any point in the future. So I'm going to add an additional channel to begin, and then I'll rename the first channel to res capital X, and then uh, the second channel to res capital Y. So that we can make this compatible for those of you who do not have a commercial license, let's go ahead and do a resolution of 1280 by 720. You can also, of course, choose any resolution that you like. And from there, I'm going to add our first top. This is going to be dealing with uh, pretty much exclusively tops. In this case, uh, we're gonna grab a noise top. So this will be the texture that we feed into our feedback loop in just a moment, uh, but we have to make some changes here first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a chop reference from that constant we just set up and apply those values to the resolution. So let's head over to the common page on the noise. I'll hit viewer active on the constant and click and drag from both of the channels there to our resolution parameters. Another thing that I want to do here is to set our pixel format from the default to 32-bit float so that when we work with the feedback, we don't get any uh, unwanted artifacting. Now, the, the kind of effect is full of artifacts and that's kind of the fun of it, but uh, we're going to do that 32-bit float uh, setting anyway. From there, let's make a couple of additional changes. Uh, I'm going to adjust my um, seed, pick any random value that you want. I just wanted to uh, kind of get away from the uh, initial state of that. So I'm just gonna pick a random one there. And then we're going to move our offset value down slightly, which we'll uh, kind of talk about later on, but that will just make our image a little bit darker, which is looking pretty good. And then finally, I'm gonna to head to the transform page so that we can animate this noise. I'm going to click the translate parameter title and then head down to the TZ parameter where we're going to use the ABS time dot seconds reference. I'm gonna multiply this by a value of 0 0.1 so that our texture will shift slowly over time. That is looking good, so I'm gonna continue by adding a limit top. And we'll place that to the right. We're gonna use the limit top to quantize the positions of uh, our pixels and to essentially give us like a pixelated effect. So I'm gonna turn on this quantize position parameter and I'll set that to round. And then for the position step, I'm going to use seemingly arbitrary values, but uh, we'll, again, we'll kind of talk about this once we got the feedback loop set up. So I'm gonna use 0 0.202 for the position step, which will increase the size of the rectangles within our image a little bit. And then I'm going to very slightly shift the position of that offset by zero, or rather negative 0.2. 019. So those are really small values, which will make a difference later on as we're applying feedback. After that, I'm going to add a null in case we want to make any changes before our feedback loop. And from there, we can actually continue on to generating feedback. So obviously to start, we need a feedback top, which I will drop down and I'm going to place above the uh, kind of branch of the network that we've worked on so far. Um, for our feedback top, uh, I'm also going to add in one chop to enable us to reset this very easily. Um, so I'm going to add a keyboard in chop, place that above. 
And we'll just leave the, the default uh, one key setting that is already in place for us. I'm gonna make a chop reference from the keyboard in to the reset pulse button, and then we can hit the one key anytime we want and uh, reset our feedback. With this kind of effect, as it will change over time and any slight adjustments can have a large impact on the result, it's helpful to be able to reset it uh, as we're working on it. After that, um, we're going to head straight in to a displace top. So the displace top is going to generate the movement that we saw in the initial uh, kind of final outcome at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to connect, first of all, the feedback to the first input, and then we need an image to um, control the displacement width. So before we jump into the parameters here within the displace top, let's go ahead and add those um, operators to create our displace image. What I used for this was another noise top. And this is where our constant comes in handy. We're gonna to have to make some similar adjustments to the noise that we set up earlier. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do, as we did before, is head to the common page and grab chop references from the resolution uh, constant that we have there. So there we go, that is now set up to be 1280 by 720. Once again, we're going to use the pixel format of 32-bit float. And then we can go on and adjust some of the uh, parameters that will affect the aesthetic. So first of all, I want this to be colorful noise instead of monochrome. So I'm going to turn that switch to off. And then uh, from there, I'm going to add a similar um, expression to our translate parameter. So let's go ahead and click on the translate parameter title and once again type in abs time dot seconds and multiply it by a similar value. You could do something a little bit more, a little bit less. I might do 0 0.12 there so that it moves at a slightly different rate. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, now we're going to add you guessed it, a limit top. So that is going to be used in the exact same way as the previous one to generate this kind of pixelation effect. And in this case, we're going to use um, some different settings. So I want to head to the quantize page again, turn on quantize position to round, and then set the position step here to 0 0.2. Now you'll notice that the uh, image coming out of our initial noise and the image coming out of this limit look very similar. But as I mentioned before, we shifted the settings in this uh, first limit very slightly so that it's subtly offset from the um, texture that we're using for displacement, which will add some visual interest to the feedback that we'll be generating in a moment just to kind of point that out as we're rolling along here. Let's go ahead and connect that limit to the displace top. And you can see it's already going crazy and looking pretty cool. Uh, we're not even generating any feedback yet, and yet we're getting this really cool uh, kind of effect. So, you know, you can always stop here and work with that if you wanted to. Um, but we're gonna keep carrying on and jump into the world of feedback. So. In the displace top, let's go ahead and make some changes. Uh, the first thing that I want to do here is to set our displace weight to something much smaller than one. So if we were to set up a feedback loop immediately, we would end up with a very intense effect being applied to our texture, and uh, that is not exactly what we want. So I'm going to reduce this displace weight to zero first so that nothing is happening and then increase it by 0 0.001. And now it looks like literally nothing is happening, but in just a second when we apply feedback, we'll see that we're getting some interesting results. The next thing I wanna do is to change my extend mode here to repeat. And this will allow the texture to kind of loop around as it is pushed off screen by this displacement. And we're all set within that operator. So now what we can do is add a final null here, and then we can use that as the endpoint of our feedback loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag the null 
onto the feedback top. And what we should see then, if we click on this little display flag, is that we've got a uh, an effect, a displacement effect being applied with feedback. And as you might have noticed, it's looking a little bit different than what we had at the beginning, although it is generating something that is very cool and interesting. So what's happening right now is we're using the colors of our limited uh, noise texture to move the texture around in this feedback loop in these rectangular quadrants almost, which will generate this very cool effect. Now, the way that I was able to get those very sharp edges in the initial version that gave it this more glitch art uh, kind of vibe is to use a different mode on the common page, which is the smoothness setting. So if we go ahead and select all of the operators that we're working with in this feedback loop, and then head over to input smoothness and change that to nearest pixel. And then on this uh, same page, change the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel, and then hit the one key to reset. What we should see is that we then get a much sharper output uh, because we're not interpolating and smoothing the textures anymore. We end up with something that looks a lot more like that glitch art and uh, net art and album covers of the early 2000s. Now there's more that we can do to continue to push this further. And the first thing that I'm going to introduce is to add some color to this texture. Uh, obviously it looks pretty cool in black and white and that can be, uh, you know, pushed pretty far. But if you're interested in adding some color, we can do that with something as simple as a look up top. So let's go ahead and add the look up top um, right after that null that we set up. And then I'm going to add in a ramp top to um, specify some colors that we can use within the lookup. So let's go ahead and connect the ramp first of all, and then I'm going to add some color keyframes within the ramp. So for my uh, color on the left here, the leftmost keyframe, I'm going to use a dark blue gray color. So I'm going to set that in the blue range and then increase my value and my saturation a bit and maybe even flip over to the RGB mode if we need to. But actually, if I just uh, shift the color a little bit to the left and then reduce the value ever so slightly, there we go. We can end up with a kind of blue gray, uh, dark, darker blue gray color. After that, I'll just add an additional keyframe to the right and kind of leave it at that color that we've already got there. And then maybe I'll add an additional one here in case you want to modify those in any way. And for my final one on the right, I think I'll reduce this into the gray range as well. Now, what that should have done is to uh, use that lookup table, the ramp, to recolor the image that we're outputting and give us something that looks like the kind of muted color choices of some of the examples that we saw at the beginning. So you can play with this as much as you want. You can use images to grab your lookup table from. You can use uh, many more colors than, than I'm using in my ramp. Uh, feel free to play around with that to your own liking. But that will uh, enable you to very quickly apply some color to what was a grayscale image. Now, you may have noticed that, again, we're still not quite at the aesthetic of the um, intro portion of the video. We get some of these kind of uh, pixelated patterns every now and again, but the intro version of this uh, effect had many more complex textures integrated into the pattern. And that is something that we'll look at now. So I'm going to turn off this display flag again, and we're going to add one additional operator within our feedback loop, which will uh, be able to generate all of those interesting textures for us. So I'm going to move everything after the displace top to the right. And then all we have to do is to open up our palette and add the secret weapon here, which is under image filters. And this is the sharpen effect. So by adding the sharpen effect and um, adjusting the parameters slightly, we can generate some very interesting pixelated patterns to 
um, our feedback texture. So I'm gonna first of all reduce the sharpen amount before I add this into our network to 0 0.125. And then we can place this in between the displace and the null. Immediately you can see something is happening. So if I then click on the null at the output, we can see that we have something very interesting occurring. We have all kinds of cool pixelated patterns appearing on screen. And if I hit one to reset, you can see that they will regenerate uh, every time that we reset our feedback. Now this obviously generates a really cool and interesting effect right off the bat, but we have some additional settings that we can adjust to modify things ever so slightly. So um, first of all, what I'm going to do is turn off the display flag so we don't have that amazing uh, pattern generating in the background and distracting us from what we're doing. Uh, let's head within the sharpen comp that we've got here. And again, we see the pattern, which I'm gonna turn off so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to make sure that all of the operators that we're working with here have the input smoothness set to nearest pixel so we get the most pixelated version of this output that we can. And then again, I'm gonna go inside of the wet dry mix and select all of the tops here and do the same thing. This is just to ensure that we don't have any interpolation occurring where we don't want it to be and that we get the most pixelated version of the output that we can. So then if we flip back on the display, it may not have had super noticeable results, but uh, rest assured that we do not have any interpolation being applied now and we can continue generating these super interesting patterns. Now, another thing that you might have noticed about the intro video is that the screen was not completely covered by the patterns that we see here. We had sections that were kind of solid blue colored and uh, instead of it being uh, pretty much overtaken by these patterns generated by the sharpen. The way that we can uh, achieve that is to add one final operator to the network, which we'll add right after the feedback. And that is a level top. So we're going to use the level top to clamp the input within a zero to one range. And that will have the effect of um, basically cutting out the portions of the signal that were moving beyond one and actually in effect within the feedback loop, generating some additional sections of those uh, patterns. So as soon as you add that level top and change this clamp input to clamp zero to one, you will immediately see these solid sections start to appear within the pattern. So obviously uh, there is a ton to explore being that this is of course a feedback loop. The patterns are already super interesting as is, but you can go much further by um, experimenting with additional effects within the feedback loop. You can change the uh, types of textures that are sent into the feedback loop. Uh, less geometric uh, inputs will give you uh, different results. And the same goes for the texture that you use to actually apply the displacement. You will get very different results from there as well. But uh, that is all that we're going to be covering within the scope of this video. So that I hope that you have enjoyed putting this together and that it has inspired you to generate some glitch art and early net art style work of your own. Thanks so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.